The Big Lebowski. The movie is set in Los Angeles in 1991. It starts with a short introduction in which an unseen narrator introduces the audience to Jeffrey Lebowski, a way out man better known as The Dude, who is leisurely shopping in the grocery department of the supermarket. Eventually, he chooses a carton of cream, writes the cashier a check for 69 cents, and goes home. Meanwhile, two bandits are waiting for the main character at the house. They introduce themselves as the people of a certain Jackie Treehorn and demand the return of his wife's debts. The dude has never even been married, so the bandits, realizing they have the wrong address, leave. One of them urinates right on the rug. This very rug really tied the room together, so following the advice of his best friend, the Polish immigrant Walter, the dude decides to go to the namesake and demand to make amends for the damage done. The next day, the so-called Big Lebowski, an elderly millionaire in a wheelchair, flatly refuses to pay compensation. In retaliation, the dude steals one of the rugs from his mansion. Also, the hero meets Bunny there, a young nymphomaniac who has married old Lebowski for his money. The next day, the big Lebowski unexpectedly invites the dude to his house and sadly informs him that Bunny has been kidnapped by bandits. The old man asks the hero to deliver a million dollars in cash to the kidnappers, as he thinks the two thugs who damaged the rug may be the extortionists. Upon returning home, the dude lies down to rest on the stolen rug, but some men break into the apartment and give the protagonist a hard blow, so he loses consciousness. After a brief musical nap, the dude wakes up on the bare floor, the new rug is gone. Later, Bunny's kidnappers call, and the dude, having received a briefcase full of money, goes to the specified location. As he does so, Walter tries to convince him that he should keep the ransom and give the bandits a valley's full of dirty underwear. The dude refuses to do this, but the man can't stop his stubborn friend. As a result, the bandits leave with a suitcase, and the heroes are left with a million dollars in their hands, having never released the hostage. The dude worries that the girl may be killed now, but Walter is unfazed. That night, on his way out of the bowling alley, the dude finds that his car has been stolen, as well as the briefcase with all the money that was in the trunk. Soon the dude is summoned by the big Lebowski's daughter, Maud, who confesses that it was her people who took the rug, because it is important to her as a memory of the mother. She reveals that Bunny works for Jackie Treehorn as a porn actress and probably arranged the kidnapping of herself to get her husband's money. Maud asks the dude not to hand over the ransom under any circumstances, since the money actually belongs to a charity fund that helps underprivileged gifted children, and Lebowski is the organization's founder. Then there is a conversation between the two Lebowskis. The big reprimands the dude for failing to hand over the money. The hero excuses himself by saying that he handed over the briefcase as agreed, but the old man shows him an envelope sent by the bandits with a woman's severed toe. The dude returns home and takes a soothing bath, after which a gang of German-accented nihilists burst into his house. They introduce themselves as the kidnappers, demand the money owed to them, and after threatening reprisals, walk away. While talking with Maud, the dude finds out that the German nihilists are Bunny's colleagues from the pornography business. The hero gets his found car from the police parking lot, but the briefcase with the money is no longer in it. Between the back of the chair and the seat is a scrap of paper with the homework of schoolboy Larry Sellers, son of famous screenwriter Arthur Digby Sellers. The dude and Walter go to denounce the teenager, but the trip turns out to be a complete failure. After a brief conversation, Walter, angry at the silly Larry, starts wrecking a brand new sports car parked next to the Sellers' house. Shortly before, the dude and Walter assume that Larry spent the money in the briefcase to buy the car. The real owner of Walter's wrecked car turns out to be an unsuspecting neighbor of the sellers who dented the dude's car in revenge. 
The heroes are coming back without money or any information in the wrecked car. Soon, the two thugs from the movie's inciting incident show up and take the dude to Malibu to see Jackie Treehorn. Treehorn asks about Bonnie's location and says he intends to get his money at any cost. The dude tells him about the 15-year-old teenager and after drinking a cocktail laced with sleeping pills, gets turned out. After another musical dream, he ends up at the police station. The Malibu sheriff expresses his displeasure regarding the disruption of the city's peace and throws a coffee mug at the dude in anger. After getting out of the police station, the hero heads home. Maud meets him in his apartment. She seduces the dude. After their sex, the heroine tells him that her father is poor since the girl's mother bequeathed all her money to charity before she died, leaving her father as the manager. Suddenly, an epiphany comes to the dude, so the whole plan becomes clear. Having learned that Bunny had been kidnapped, the Big Lebowski, under the guise of a ransom, decided to embezzle a million dollars from the family foundation. He too called the money for himself, but only gave the dude an empty briefcase, expecting that he, an unemployed bonehead, would be accused of theft and the girl would be killed. Later, it turns out that there was no kidnapping at all. Bunny simply went to another town for a few days, and her nihilistic friends decided to play it off as a kidnapping and extort money from the rich old man. The dude and Walter go to the Lebowski residence, where they meet Bunny, who has just returned from her trip. They uncover the big scheme, but he confesses nothing and denies his mercenary intentions. Then Walter accuses him of faking paralysis, lifts the man from his chair and throws him to the floor. The feeble old man cries bitterly and the heroes are forced to leave. A little later, the friends encounter the gang of nihilists who set the dude's car on fire and are still claiming a million. Having accepting the fact that their strategy has failed, the Germans demand to give all the money the heroes have in their pockets. Being a Vietnam War veteran, Walter gets into a fight and neutralizes the robbers, biting off the ear of one of them. The friends are unharmed, but Donnie, their bowling partner, who had been standing aside the whole time, dies of a heart attack. After talking to the funeral director, the heroes ascend the high cliff with Donnie's ashes. Walter gives a farewell speech, in which he mentions that Donnie loved surfing and bowling, then deflects to talk about the soldiers who died in Vietnam. The hero concludes with a quote from Hamlet, Good night, sweet prince. After it, Walter scatters the ashes in the Falgers coffee box, but the wind blows the ashes not into the ocean, but directly into the dude's face. He's offended, but Walter gives him a big hug and suggests that they go bowling. The movie ends with a scene where the dude meets the narrator. The man in the cowboy suit tells him not to be upset about his friend's death and to move on with his life. Concluding the story, the narrator notes that it's obviously a pity about Donnie, but life goes on.